Hi, welcome back to Bard's Tale 3. This is Jay Rodman, and I have a misleading thing up on... <laughs> well, I'm going to leave this up anyway, because uh, in the last video, we, we finished... We most pretty much finished. We finished as much as I'm going to finish, at least on camera, the second level of the Ice Keep. And because I recorded playthrough independently of talking about it, I didn't quite wrap up what I had to say about it. So... What I had to say about the Ice Keep is, the second level, there's a puzzle required to get up it, and I'll show a little bit more of that later, just to show it. Um, but you have to solve a puzzle to get to it, but there is absolutely nothing on the level that helps you towards completing the game in any way. There's all these difficult um, areas to get to that are actively harmful and have nothing useful in them. There's um, a bunch of hit point drains and spell point drains and so on. There's some weird, inaccessible locations. But in the end, there's no reason to have come here at all. It's not even like it's the second level and it's on the way to the third level. There are only stairs down back to the first level. There is, there is no reason for someone who's trying to complete this game to come up to this level at all, ever. It's not like the monsters are even different from the first level. If you were trying to get experience points, you could get the same number of experience points grinding the first level as the second level, and the first level actually has useful things on it. I, I, this is, I found this really hard to accept the first time I played this game, and to, for this reason, I went to every single location and tried teleporting and phase dooring every single wall and etc. And in the end, no, there's just nothing here except for wastes of your time. Anyway, so that's what I have to say about this ice keep uh, upstairs. Uh, and so that's partly why I didn't do any um, normal speed uh, recording of that level, because it's crap. Anyway, I still got a bunch of experience points. So <coughs> after I finished ice keep 2, uh, I walked out, walked through Galidia, teleported back to Scarabray, and went to the old man and I'm gonna get reviewed. I don't even know if I'm gonna level up yet. It's just the thing I wanted to do next. So Grisnak. I'm kind of expecting everyone's gonna go up at least one, but I don't know. Grisnak goes up one, gets a level of luck, and that's it. No no uh, additionals. Uh, Lady Oakshield gets a, a level and a point of dexterity. Uh, Chantrell gets a point of dexterity. I don't think that helped her armor class, but that's okay. I still like dexterity. Maybe it helps you attack earlier in combat. Um, Elena got a point of constitution, which is sorely needed. Oop. And looks like most of them still need 250,000 for their next level. Elendor has not yet gone up, but is not that far away. Um, Probably will level up after this session. Uh, Griselda is now less than a million to go, or down to 800,000. And Lillian is at 1,900,000, because her next level is level 14 of Archmage, and she has to get all the experience points to hit level 14, whereas uh, Griselda only has to get the experience points Number. Griselda only has to hit the, get the experience point to hit level 11, 12, something like that. Eventually she'll need the same number of experience points to hit 14, but she'll get some levels before then. So, um, I don't think that gives us any meaningful improvements. Uh, my rogue was already at 99s in, I think, every skill. Elena still is probably going to stay there for the rest of the game. Uh, they they all got slight bumps to their saving throws, which actually helps a fair bit. They all got slight bumps to their hit points, which helps a lesser extent. And the next thing I'm going to do is a bunch of um, inventory juggling. So I'm heading back to the refugee camp. And I should have used the safety song because all kinds of garbage level one opponents are challenging me. Oh. 
Okay, so here in the uh, refugee camp, I'm gonna put away a bunch of items that I don't actually want to use very much right now. Maybe not ever, but for some reason I want to keep them around. Maybe this is maybe I'm just being a pack rat, like um, like I'm building some kind of trophy case. Uh, there are a few that I probably might use, um, but not they're not good enough. They're not relevant enough to carry around. So I have a ton of special weapons. Um, let's go through them. I have a thunder sword, which is uh, just does this uh, apparently. So I tried out all these weapons eventually, and it was hard to figure out what they did, partly because I always have a light spell running. Most of them, wait, I'm trying to use use. Maybe I can't use from here? Maybe I can't show you. Yeah, I can't use here. Anyway. Most of them create light. Most of them cast an equivalent spell to Greater Revelation. And I already have a free Greater Revelation item I'm carrying around. Those pipes of pan. So I don't need more of them. Uh, the Thunder Sword actually reduces your armor class by two, which sounds great. But it doesn't do an instant kill, and I really want to keep that lying around. Arm's Knife is a strong ranged weapon. I'm keeping that uh, in my inventory. I've been using it now and then. Although... Um, if the fight seems decided, I tend to use Thor's hammer instead. The holy sword? Um, I can't remember what it did, but it wasn't something that mattered. It might have also been light, but I don't know. I tried them out sufficiently to figure out I didn't need them. Divine Halberd does nothing. Um, it is just a minus one armor class weapon that's decent. So this is also something I don't need because a stone blade is so much more useful. The stone blade is going to be, you know, I'm fighting monsters that have like hit point totals like 1,000 or 2,000. And effectively the stone blade is doing like 2,000 damage. Those other weapons, with all my multiple attacks, I, I might be getting 400. But the stone blade is only going to continue to scale excellently. Uh, I'm going to keep the arms knife on her as well. I'll dump it with its three charges in a pinch. Uh, the willow flute. Hmm. Let me check my notes. The willow flute does a wizard war, which is supposed to be a strong spell that never works well for me. Um, so, and, and she's already got, wait, my focus is on the wrong program. Uh, she's already got a flame horn and oh firebrand this is one I can get rid of this is in the same category of weapons that help your armor class a little um, and I don't I, I I have a more important weapon which is on her the bard sword which lets her do infinite bard songs so if I find another source of infinite bard songs I'll gladly trade for a weapon with fringe benefits like armor class because she doesn't ever attack anyway I mean, she does, but only when I forget to have her, you know, when I'm going fast and I press A four times without thinking, then she attacks. Uh, power Staff. This, oh, here's another Flame Sword. We can hand that over. Uh, power Staff, I'm going to get rid of shortly. It doesn't dis disrupt illusion uh, power. No, that's the Sorcerer Staff, which I also am going to get rid of. Okay, well, I've done getting rid of weapons, so I'm going to drop our weapon holder. And then we can add the instruments holder. At this point, I will hand that willow flute over. And, okay, I know that Chantrell, all her items she wants at this point, so I'm going to drop Chantrell and Instruments. The only, I think all that we've got left to get rid of is effectively these 
miscellaneous magic items and the key which I have no idea where I'm going to end up using so I'm not going to carry it around for now I probably should be the thing about the trick bricks is they use a cold style attack and, and Galidia most of the monsters seem to be resistant So hopefully I'll whoever, whatever comes after Glidia will not be terribly cold resistant and I'll try my best to sort of use them up uh, because I'm assuming the monsters will outscale them soon enough and then they will feel useless. Yes, this power staff can go off to misc magic. And I think that's it for cleaning up my party. Sadly, this is sort of a necessary thing because otherwise you run out of inventory slots. Well, that is not what I meant to do because otherwise you end up with running out of inventory slots and then you end up not being able to pick anything up and, well, it gets bad. Oh, I didn't hand the key over. Who has the key? Is it, oh, did I somehow remove, probably the number shifted and I removed the wrong person. Yes, so move misc magic and then after that's done writing, add Lillian. And this is sort of, this towering is sort of a, a trophy hutch kind of item. It's a great item for monks and, well, you know, we dropped our monk. But I just sort of wanted to have one. So putting it in the bank, saving everyone. And now loading our party again and heading off to Glidia. Did I re no, I didn't reorder everyone because I loaded them all from the fixed thing. Okay, pausing this for the copy protection. Okay, uh, back in Lydia. And of course, in order to get to the keep, all we have to do is go, oh, I forgot. Let's turn on all our spells. We lost them when we went into the refugee camp. One east, and then we can go directly north to the keep and head on up. So as I mentioned earlier, there's actually absolutely nothing of interest on level two. But um, here is the presentation of the quote-unquote puzzle to get there. Stone Our Guardian asks the party, speak your name, Defender, and pass a friend. Back in uh, part 43, the first Galidia one anyway, we found, um, well, the first one we explored, okay, second Galidia one. The first one we explored, Lydia, we found the hut, frozen guy, diary. He said his name was Alandar. And if we say that, we get stairs. If we don't say that, we don't get stairs. Of course, as I mentioned, we don't need the stairs. Um, in the middle...
is what to me feels like um, the eventual target of this base place. Uh, in fact, maybe I could use the little altar symbol that feels thematically appropriate. Where are you? Not the couch. The couch seems a little, you know, I don't think that has the right gravitas. There we go. Whoa, all those words. Okay, so we're in this room. The first square should do nothing. At this point, we can see all these three. The second square turns off our sorcerer's sight, so now we don't see anything. The third square is a spinner. Although, I'm pretty sure we're facing north based on the distance and the lack of door. So I think it spun us to the same way we're already facing. So let's step north again. Oh, no, we were facing east. I can tell because we hit another spinner. Now that's definitely south. Uh, that's either east or north. I'm going to go. That was west. Sorry, it was either west or north is what I meant. Okay. The pain of spinners. I'm, I keep going back and forth. Um... You know, I'm just going to go to the wall, because the wall is understandable. And now, because the wall's on the left, we must be facing north. Although... Wait, did, did, did we... Oh my goodness. I, I thought I ended up here, but I ended up here, so I went south instead of north. This is, this is ridiculous. Okay, now I know which wall I'm on. I'm going to first hit these two squares we never have, just to confirm there's nothing unknown in them. West and then, and then a fight, which I'm going to run from. I may be guaranteed to be able to run from all fights at this point because of the speed boots. I knew they made it easier. Uh, I didn't know that they would necessarily guarantee it. Or maybe they make it so easy that depending upon level and so on, it, it, effectively makes it guaranteed. Okay, so here we have the flower, here we are on the spinner. Wall on the right, come on, wall on the right. Wall on the right, please, wall on the right, god damn it. Okay, now we are in the sound of silence. West move two, north move east one. Okay, we've now been in every cell in this room. I'm gonna go back here and here. Oh, and unsurprisingly, all of these are, all of these are stuck. Unsurprisingly and irritatingly. Come on, come on. Okay, finally, so. I wrote all this down, but uh, I find, oh, this is the, sorry, this is the stairs square, one west. I find this a little hard to digest. This, a slab of white marble sits flush into the floor. A gold plug sits in the center of it and reeks of magic. Light falls from Light from above falls directly onto the disc from a silver disc in the ceiling. Like that part really start getting confused. Carved into the stone above the gold disc, you see three overlapping circles. One arrow points from each circle towards the castle's towers. The crystal circle is empty. The smoky circle is empty. The black circle is empty. So... The last part is the only part I find kind of more or less digestible. Um, I actually made a typo in here, which I'm going to fix. It's, uh, okay, so what I get is 
Yeah. Yeah. They, they talk about the di first they say a slab of marble and later they talk about a disc, which I guess is, they mean the plug. Anyway, there's a big chunk of marble. There's a gold circle in it. There's light coming down on it. And there's three things in the slab next to the gold. I don't know, whatever. There are three circles and the three circles point to the three towers and the three circles are uh, empty, which I don't know what that means. Maybe there's like a hole in them that's clearly empty, but the game logic of there's three circles that are empty pointing to three towers is pretty clearly go finish the three towers and then come back here. That's what I wanted to kind of convey. And instead of going back through the spinners, I'm gonna to try to cut through the wall. Oh, and it would help if I didn't if I didn't try to do it with a chronomancer who doesn't do wall cutting. There we go. And some more wall cutting. We're actually in the spell point regen room now, which would be more impressive if it regenerated faster. It's, it's sort of a, if you're leaving your computer for a while to do something and you want to regenerate spell points a little faster, then the spell point regen zone is for you. In some of the older games, there were a few spots in Bart's Tale 2 where I actually did take significant advantage of these. Um, like there would be some spell point drain thing that was supposed to empty you out of spell points and then if you were very, I don't know, keenly observant, you might find the spell point regen and then I would just sit there until I was full before going and fighting the difficult whatever boss or encounter. Okay, so this is what I assume are entrances to the three towers. Here's one. Uh, between you and the doorway beyond, you see an opalescent hulking creature with four eyes and three eyes. Whoop, wrong window. Scrolled on the wall, you see wolf to sate hunger, a hero true, but not one at all. Focus its attention, but better not be seen at all. Now, earlier, uh, when we were out in the freezing wastes, the diary of Alandar told us that there were a bunch of wards, and the only way to defeat them was to cast the spells, the right spells. And I believe that these are a list of those spells that we have to cast. Partly because this short spell, like, I know the Bard's Tale spell list, and this sounds like them. Uh, you could theoretically go look at the spell list yourself. Um, so you could yourself go online and find lists of spells and try to figure it out, because they're basically largely based on the spell names. For example, if we say... Wolf to sate hunger, which I don't understand how wolf sate hunger, but we get instant wolf. Alex instant wolf. There's actually another wolf, but I don't think that's it. There's a, oh, well, in an older version, there was a wind wolf. So we only get one wolf spell. So we can say cast so and so instant wolf. The magic has been absorbed by the creature. And they mean that strangely described creature that I don't remember the description of. Here we have a hero true, but not one at all. So we can say hero. And we find wind hero creates an illusionary hero with the power of blah, blah, blah. Illusionary hero, that sounds right. Oh, wrong, wrong person. Wind hero. Focus its attention. This one kind of ticked me off because um, force focus doesn't have anything to do with having your attention focused. It's just, it, this is force focused like um, 
I don't know, whatever. To me, like focusing a beam of light doesn't have much to do with focusing attention, but uh, there is word correlation. And it works. And last we have, but better not be seen at all. Now this one, seen isn't gonna work. Earth Maw is not probably what they mean and I can't cast it yet anyway. Better is not gonna tell me. This one you have to apply a little bit of thought. What is it to not be in scene? You could be hidden, but there's, there's really no hide spell. But of course there is the invisibility spell. And so I cast invisibility and the creature fades away into nothingness, which is fitting. And now there's a passageway and we get access to a new dungeon. It was a sort that was the little puzzle for us um, to figure out the four spells. I think that some of these are a little trickier than others. And now we have a new region. After I say yes, I thought I said yes already. Maybe I typed it into the browser. No. Oh, I probably did say yes. Because whenever you go anywhere, you always get asked immediately, do you want to go back? Okay, so it is the gray tower. Uh, let's take a note first. This gray tower has... Let me read it first. This gray tower has an odd feel to it. Ice fills it, yet there is, yet, yet has, let me try again. This gray tower has an odd feel to it. Ice fills it, yet here has an ethereal aspect. That is a typo of some kind. Yet there is an ethereal aspect. It does seem, curiously, as if the ice is here only because the tower does not take notice of it. I'm just going to change it to there is because I think that's what they meant. I don't know whether that I'm supposed to take away that the tower is some sort of slumbering giant or what? Okay, and this this dungeon is small. This dungeon is, um, oh, setup, not options, is five by five. And we are over here, which means our uh, axes are gonna look like zero from zero to four we're looking west but it looks like we're looking through a bunch of one-way walls because um, the auto map has a bunch of lines so I'm gonna preemptively put them down and if they're wrong, we'll change them later. And our note, can I move the note? That's right, I, can't, I think I cannot move notes, but it's easily, it's, it's easy to... It's easy? It's easy to move the, to copy the, the, the information? Oh, right. That's right, you can move the note. You have to go to edit mode and then change the, to the position. Anyway, uh, there's a wall to the northeast and south. So we have zero choices so far. And I should run a bard song. Oh, 
I'm going to at least do the first few fights. I am more afraid of the Rhyme Lord than the Jack Cross because it's new. But first I'm just going to let them do whatever they do. Rather than take a lot of preemptive action. Yeah, I know the Jack Cross can do a breath attack. It's not a as things go in this dun in this world, that breath attack is not among the most dangerous. So I'm kind of shrugging it off. So my most down on hit points is Lady Oakshield. But ultimately, she ends up close to 100 down from the start. It's not great. But depending upon the next fight goes, she could end up back at full. Oh, my, my uh, light spell ran out. So let's check the walls behind us. And I hit a trap that I didn't detect. Oh, I didn't detect any traps because when you're on a square that's, you know, jabbering text at you, that overrides any of those messages. But now we can detect traps everywhere. And you know, I don't actually care where the traps are that much. I don't, I kind of expect to be going to this dungeon once. So I'm just gonna get rid of them where I can see them. I guess these don't count as stairs, uh, and as such, I should mark mark it as something, but not stairs. Glacier golems. I think it's. I think I want to try Godfire on them and see what happens. That was not especially an impressive amount of damage. How about Wither Fist on second group of golems? I can do. I wonder how much. I don't remember how many hit points Jack Frost has. I'm going to try some Soul Whips. The glacier golems are have not gone down at all under a wither fist and a godfire. How about two wither fists? Okay, that was enough to kill several of them.
I feel like I could lose some party members by not doing a healing spell. But I think what's more likely is I'll get off some more rounds of bard healing. In fact, I'm going to be really greedy and just play a song and do nothing else. And I think that hurt Grisnak, but benefited everyone else. And I think that's enough greed. I am worse off than before the last fight in terms of hit points, but it's not so low that I'm scared yet. Okay, this seems like a spinner, but nothing told me there would be a spinner. So that makes me think that I, st I actually hit an odd square that turned off my sorcerer sight. Okay, so... I think these do count as stairs. I'm going to worry about the odd spot a bit later. Okay, and we have darkness here. Okay, I'm clicking darkness. There we go. What do you bet it's going to be one-way walls all the way? Kicking south doesn't get through. From here, we can detect a spinner on the square where we already know there was a spinner. <laughs> Thanks. To the east, there are stairs here somewhere. darkness. No, no, dar darkness, yes. Where is our one-way wall? This one? Yeah. Pretty sure that's what we're going to find it all is. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the sleep mages need to die first, so I'm attacking. Wait, they're not the... The order they initially announced them to, to you in is not the order you interact with them in in combat because they reorder them by distance. I don't know why they don't just order them by distance to start out with. So I'm going to try, both my mages will try pulling the sleep mages into melee. Uh, 
And hopefully that will give them time to be stabbed. Attack C, attack C. And I'm going to cast Restoration for effect effectively good luck. Because although the polar bears do respectable damage, I think this fight is well in hand at this point. Yeah, they hit for like sub 100. But they don't always usually hit so reliably as that. Oh, so one of the breakthrough throughs I think I made was um, noting that this game seems to have the same logic as Bard's Tale 1 and 2. Uh, for calculating chance to hit, or at least it has some of the same mechanics. So most notably, your chance to hit is influenced by your own armor class, which is definitely a break with uh, old D&D tradition, so it's a little surprising. But as a result, if I stack up my own armor bard songs, my rogue ends up hitting way more often than she does otherwise. Hmm, that's something I don't want. Okay, so is it a spinner in this corner too? It seems that it is. Somewhere in front of us is a trap, and in the next corner is a spinner. Pretty sure what we saw was something like this. Now to the south, there's a spinner and a quiet somewhere, but I don't really have any way to know where right now. I guess I can look north, and so I know the spinner has to be here or here. I guess I know the quiet is here because I can't see it. Right? One, two, three. Yeah, so the quiet's here and the spinner's here, here, probably actually in this corner, but we'll find out. Again, oh, and we didn't see the stairs here, so the stairs must be here, here, and I'm betting they're in the middle. Yeah, and the one-way walls behind us continue. I'm pretty sure at this point we're going to find... ...that this pattern continues. Just my bet. Probably this one, too. This is supposed to be a door. I just was using the default edge at the time. Okay, um, I'm gonna go all the way around.
Okay, so the last spot here was also a spinner, but but I feel like they really broke with the symmetric the symmetry here, putting the spinner there instead of at the corner. Again, we have a spinner in quiet. If I look the other way, we have a spinner in quiet. So both of them are in these two squares. That makes me suspect that the layout will be like this. Not really known yet, though. And this is the stairs at this point. We know it. There is no longer a question. I guess I can make call those stairs down at this point. Even though it says passageway, it detects them as stairs, so I'll mark them as stairs. I wonder whether we can phase door around through this dungeon. Nope, not so much. Can't say that I'm shocked, because it seems to be all about navigating tight spaces. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this is us looking east. And from this view, we can infer some more things. This is a one-way wall. And this is a one-way wall. And this is a one-way wall, because we can't see them from here. And looking the other way, sell more or less the same thing. Okay. Mr. Rhyme Lord, I want to know more about you. Do you have any mean tricks or are you just you're just some kind of cannon fodder? <coughs> Despite the uh menacing name like you're going to collect my taxes or something my rhyme taxes okay um i i, I don't know why i prefer east but i prefer east okay i'm a little confused because we went east, and then I saw a wall in front of us. Maybe it's the, maybe we just went through a one-way wall, because I thought that this would be one way out in all directions. But I'm pretty sure that's west. Wait, does that make sense? No, because... Maybe this is a door one way and a wall the other way? Oh crap, I don't know. It could be us, this could be the view south with this being a wall. What other views have we got? That is got to, well, that could be north or east because both of them will have a wall on the left. Uh, c could the southern direction just look like a wall? It could. But I think what I found out is there's a one-way wall into this square.
and I think this is south. Let's check. Yes. Our intuition, my intuition about where the spinner would be was wrong. In fact, this is a spinner and silence, which I don't have a way to write because if I put down the spinner, the silence goes away. So silence. Okay, and if we can freely turn here, we can check east, which just looks the way we think it should. Yeah, I thought north was going to be a one-way wall. And west, as far as we can tell, is a wall. Although I'm suspecting at this point it's going to be a one-way wall because I think this level is all one-way walls. Okay, and we went south twice, and I had hoped this was not going to be a spinner, but I think I already knew it was going to be, because I could detect one this way, and that is definitely west. Um, because there's a door there, and it's the only, because, and... We, we're not close enough to this door, so it's going to be a new door. I guess it could be a one-way door, but I don't think so. Edge, door. But I want to see some of the other views. That's east or south, I bet. I bet they look the same. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I wish there weren't so many spinners. Because then I could confirm my my expectations. I bet it's I bet the whole dungeon looks like this. Yeah, from here, these were both walls. And if we go north, oh, this wall in front of us is a real wall. No. West, oh, that's a real wall too. Somehow I expected this to be all one-way walls facing out. I'm gonna go around once more and go around this side. Darkness, yep. In case you didn't follow that, that was me going here and here. So our chance of hitting them is related to our armor class, which is why I'm going to do the armor class song a couple times. Oh, well, 
they're almost all dead now. So, healing song it is. So we're now on the second level, and in front of us is what looks like a wall. So the east looks like a wall, south looks like a door. like a wall. I'm going to try the ball. They act like walls. And a message. level feels odd because the walls warp and change. The light wavers and dims, making you unsure of everything you see. I'm a little unsure how that's any different from what the level we were just on. But it's what it says. So apparently, there are walls to the east and the west, as we can best tell. And then there are two more. And then we can see the wall that's right there. Okay. Um, this makes me start wanting to do the gray stuff. So you can easily tell a little darker. And what does Automap, Mr. Automap say? Mr. Automap says there are one-way walls. I'm sure we're all shocked. Ice bears. Are these like polar bears? Are they made out of ice? Like an ice sculpture bear? I'm gonna use the armor song and no spells. And I repeat. Now I'm going to start doing the healing, hoping that negative 44 is sort of enough armor. Because uh, going from negative 44 to negative 50 seems less payout than going from negative 34 to negative 44. And they didn't hit me, so that's nice. That is a 
That gave me a chance to get in a little bard healing, better off than before. More experience, richer. I have a quiver. Is a quiver an identified item? <coughs> a yellow staff sure seems like an identified item. I mean, it seems like a, the result we'd get from an identify operation. About the quiver, I don't remember. Oh, an unidentified wand. Should we try using yellow staff? Powerless. Uh, is it like a war staff? Is this like a staff you hit people with? Yeah, the quiver seems, uh, somehow that to me says unidentified. Zen arrows. Those actually hit for like 500 damage or something like that. I don't, I don't quite understand how that's possible. Maybe they just get you in the right spot. Wand of Fury, which I forget, they seem like they buff you or something. It's like a do more damage. I don't know. But one thing that's for sure, that was a one-way wall. Standing. Do I have the wrong number of steps? So this is where we came in. This is where we got the message. Uh, yeah, I'm just behind. I haven't repositioned my, my guy yet. That's the problem. And I need to draw the one-way wall, the same one-way wall again. Oh, and these need to be drawn as blue walls so they're clearer okay um and i think it's gonna be what's going on here oh my cell points just went up a bit i said them change i thought they went down looks like looks like a elbow and this looks like Mr. Automap, what do you see? You see one-way walls. Okay. Let me go east one. Looking north, we can tell this is a one-way wall this way. Because... Uh, Because um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the uh, mark some other stuff too. We could see through these, and yet they're marked on the map as walls. So I'm gonna assume they're one-way walls going that way. But now we're over here, looking north, and we can see on the side that there's no. There's no walls on the left, even though there were walls looking the other way, so they must be all one-way walls this way. Of course, on the right-hand side, on the auto map, these walls have the same thin quality, so I think they're one-way walls this way too.
And probably this is going to be a one-way wall, just because that's how it seems to go. Uh, attack the polar bear and the cult mage, and healing song and hide, and defend and melee men, the cult mage. Melee men didn't work. We can try again. Hope springs eternal, right? Still did not work. I will have Lillian try it because she's higher level. Now there are two of them and they still are not here. Come, come here. Finally. Okay, now I can beat them the hell up. Four thousand two hundred. Yep, one way wall from this house. So looking north from here, I have nothing that contradicts these walls. These might be normal walls. That is weird. And they look double thick on the map. Okay, so, um, Step forward, check behind us. Ugh. Option H. Uh, uh, option H, not Control H. Good, good gracious. Looking east, what do we got? We've got an elbow and a fight that I'm just going to ignore because this is too many fights and I want to finish this level of the dungeon. And I think it's going to be a one-way wall. Yep. We can see we can see diagonally through this, which means this is also one way this way. And look at the way they draw the lines. So this line on the upside is one way wall this way, and the line on the downside is a one way wall the other way. 
do a similar thing with the sideways walls, but it's harder to tell. Okay, so I step north. It tells me something about there being stairs. I'm frankly not really worried about where the stairs are right now. Though I suspect they're going to be like down in this corner. Yep, that was a wall behind me. Going north. And to the west gets me to where I've already been. So that doesn't seem very attractive. Oh, so... This is a one-way wall to the east, and I can tell because uh, it was a wall from this side. Now, where I am now is a place I could have gotten from the entrance way. Uh, you know, I could have gone south and gone west to get here, but I went south and went east, and that sort of locked me into this. I mean, I could have gone back, looped back, and then gone this way anyway. But now I'm definitely at sort of the furthest point of advancement for either path. Looking north, this is this is not this is a door. I wish there was a keystroke for I want a door. There's a keystroke for I want a thing on an edge that is not the wall, which is whatever you used last, and I got really used to it being door. Okay, so facing south, this is still a real wall, which is not surprising. It's from the same size as I saw before. There's an opening on the right, and then there's some kind of scoop. The auto mass perspective is this is a wall, one way wall. And this is a one way wall. Oh, north. Okay, so I can see two, two, uh, two forward, which means, among other things, I'm seeing through that wall. And Mr. Automap says this is a one way wall, too. I'm sure these guys will turn out to be one-way walls, but for now, that's what it looks like. Uh, I guess we can just go through this way to more fully explore all the spots. And I don't know how we're going to get here, so let's try the doorway. Oh, there's stairs up here. What about north? North seems like a wall from here. And what about east? East is... <laughs> okay. So... From the east, it's a door, but from the west, it's a, it's not there. I don't know how to... My symbol set has the idea of a one-way door, which usually means a door you can only go through one way. I'm going to use the symbol for, I don't know, I'm going to use this symbol. It's 
kind of meaningless because except for that you have to be able to make sense of what you see out in the world and if you think you're supposed to see a door and there's a gap you may make errors okay so now I'm gonna go down here and I don't think it's gonna to lead to anything I think that where we are right now is sort of the goal but it'd be nice to check So looking east, we can tell this is actually a one-way wall. And checking the auto map, we can tell this is a one-way wall. And so is this. Okay, let's go east and turn south. Come on, come on, go east, turn south, run away. In front of us, we see a wall on the right, and then a wall in front of us and a wall to our right. We don't see this, so it's going to be a one-way wall in. And Mr. Automap tells us that we are looking through two one-way walls directly in front of us. He also tells us that this is a one-way one -way wall back north. <laughs> okay, okay, it's fine. It's interesting that these walls are real. It's like a rarity. Uh, so looking west, we have, of course, a one-way wall here. I'm unclear what a one-way wall would look like on wraparound. But so far, as far as we can tell, this is a normal wall on the edge here. East, yeah, it looks like a wall. North looks clear. North and east from that square look clear. Okay, this is curious. Um, we see another apparent door over here. And... This wall is one way this way. Okay. Step through. Look behind us. Okay, so that was a one-way wall around the edge. Unsurprising. Uh, option H. Um, what, what is your problem? Oh, we're in keyboard mode. Option H. Put the damn... Thank you. Okay. Um, and if we go south from here, we find a parent wall to the south, which matches this. I guess that's a real full wall. And same, same to the east. Okay, so I think we've now fully mapped this... Uh, this crazy level <laughs> oh wait except this was never a one-way wall I just looked like it on the map auto map Uh, 
I'm not gonna bother though. These, these need to be cleared because they're just misleading. Okay. So let's go to the stairs. And the way to get there is from here. The way to get there is to go west, west, south, south, west, west, north. Okay, I'm going to stop this session here on um, uh, what is the theme of this tower? This is the Grey Tower, level 3. Uh, at least in some sense it's level 3. I'm going to stick with the ground floor and two levels above for now. Put this this guy. I'm gonna put him where I want him. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. This has been Jay Rudman playing a tricky mapping, a couple levels of Bard Seal Three. See you.